Hello! In addition to using the email feature we saw in the previous video, you can also use the share command to share your content. This feature gives you more flexibility in terms of controlling access and allows you to create tickets. I'll show you some of these options and we'll also talk about creating groups as well. To share a file, select it and then click Share. If you want to share with someone outside of the university, type or paste the user's email address in the box. Otherwise, to share with someone inside the U, search by the person's name or internet ID. The default is to search by internet ID. If you need to search by name, click the Advanced Search menu. I'm going to search by internet ID, so I'll close the menu. I'll enter the internet ID then click Find. When the user is found, be sure to select it before clicking OK, otherwise the user won't be added. Now click Next. By default, the user will have read-only access. You can grant contributor access or full access instead. Be careful. Administer access allows the user to extend permissions to others. I'm going to give Caltray 10 viewer access, which will allow them to read the file. Click Next to send an email notification with a file link. We recommend you always send email because it makes the sharing process easier for both of you. This is the same interface we saw in the previous video. Remember that you can edit the body of the message as long as you keep the table intact. Click Finish and the email is sent. The user will receive a link which will require them to log into NetFiles. When they do, the file will download. We just looked at basic sharing using the share command. You can also share using the permissions tool. This feature allows you to grant specific types of access, giving you more control over how content is shared. For example, I really want Caltray 10 to be able to read as well as write the file. So I'll select the file, click Manage, and choose Permissions. There are two tabs, Basic and Advanced. From either tab you can remove or add additional users or groups. The users must have a university internet ID. Under Basic Permissions, I could make Caltray 10 a contributor. However, contributors can delete, and I don't want that. So, I'll go to the Advanced tab and turn on Write Access. This is just what I want for this user. Here, I am sharing a file. But if you are sharing a folder, you will also see Inherit Permissions options, which will allow you to set how children folders or files will inherit permissions from their parent folder. I'm done here, so I'll click Apply and OK to confirm the change. No notification will be sent to the user. This account already has a link to the file but you might want to let your users know they have additional access. To get the link for the content you shared, you can always go under Summary and copy the full URL. Notice the Summary screen contains lots of other information about the content, such as who modified it last and when. When sharing content, be careful granting write, delete, or administer access. 
especially to the public. And never share your home directory. You could lose control over your files or lose your files entirely. Now on to groups. If you find you are sharing files or folders with the same set of people repeatedly, you can create a group and then share content with the group. To manage groups, click Setup in the upper right. Choose My Contacts, then Groups. Click New Group and enter a group name. You will not be able to edit this name later. Click Next. Search for users using their name or better yet, their internet ID. Select the user, then click Add Members. When you are done adding members, click Save. Your group now appears on the Groups tab. You can grant permissions to a group. Doing so is no different than granting permissions to an individual. When done managing groups, click Home in the upper left to get back to your home directory. This is it for sharing. In the next videos, you will learn how to organize and manage your content.